I stood there, nervously clutching the edge of the vanity table as Mrs. Johnson meticulously applied a layer of foundation to my face. The room smelled faintly of rose water and cosmetics, a stark contrast to the usual scent of cologne that I was accustomed to. The harsh lighting illuminated every detail of my transformation, and I could see myself changing in the mirror. Bill, you need to stay still, Mrs. Johnson, no, Anna, as she insisted I call her now, said gently but firmly. Her expert hands moved with precision, as if she'd done this a million times before. I never imagined I'd be in this position, dressed in Amy's clothes, with her mother making me up to look like one of the girls. Anna, I'm so sorry about everything, I mumbled, my voice sounding foreign to my ears. I had been caught in Amy's room, rummaging through her drawers. It was an innocent mistake, really. I was looking for a band-aid, but of course, it looked much worse than that. I could still remember the look on Anna's face when she walked in. Only a pervert checks out a girl's panty drawer, Bill, she had said, her voice heavy with disappointment. I tried to explain, but she didn't want to hear it. She sat me down and started this transformation, telling me it was time I understood what it was like to be on the other side. Anna, I'm not a pervert, I tried again, my cheeks flushing with embarrassment as she applied blush. I was really just looking for a band-aid. She sighed, her eyes softening slightly but not losing their resolve. If you aren't a pervert, as you said, that makes you a crossdresser, right? Aren't you lucky I own a salon? I had no idea how to respond to that. I just nodded meekly, feeling more and more like a character in some surreal dream. Amy had come in once, took one look at me, and burst out laughing before her mother shooed her away. There, Anna said, stepping back to admire her work. You look lovely, Michelle. Michelle, I asked, bewildered. Yes, Michelle, you will be my daughter's best girlfriend, won't you? I swallowed hard, trying to comprehend what was happening. Yes, Anna, I mean, if that's what you want. Anna's stern expression softened into a smile. Good. Now, let's go show Amy. She'll be thrilled to have a new best friend. As I stood up, my legs wobbly in the high heels she'd insisted I wear, I felt a strange mix of emotions. Humiliation, yes, but also a weird sense of acceptance. Maybe this was Anna's way of teaching me a lesson, or maybe she saw something in me that I hadn't seen in myself. As I walked out to face Amy, I took a deep breath. This was going to be a day I would never forget. Amy's laughter echoed down the hall as Anna and I approached. The sound made my heart pound harder in my chest, but I forced myself to keep walking. The click of my heels against the wooden floor was a stark reminder of my current situation. Anna opened the door to Amy's room, and I stepped inside, feeling every inch the part one was playing. Amy looked up from her phone, her eyes widening in surprise. She blinked once, then twice before a slow smile spread across her face. Wow, Bill, I mean, Michelle, she corrected herself, still smiling. You look amazing. I blushed, unsure how to respond. Thanks, Amy, your mom did all the work. Amy walked over to me, her eyes filled with curiosity and amusement. So, what do you think? Are you ready to be my new best girlfriend? I took a deep breath trying to steady my nerves. I guess so, if that's what it takes to make things right. Amy giggled, but there was a hint of seriousness in her eyes. You know, this could be fun. I've always wanted a friend who understands both sides. I wasn't sure what she meant by that, but I nodded anyway. Yeah, I guess it could be. Anna clapped her hands together, drawing our attention. All right, girls, why don't you go out for a bit? Maybe get some ice cream or do some shopping. Michelle, I want you to experience a day as Amy's best friend. I stared at her, wide-eyed. Go out, like this. Anna nodded, her expression leaving no room for argument. Yes, like this. It's part of the lesson. Amy grabbed my hand, her excitement palpable. Come on, Michelle. It'll be fun. Let's go to the mall. 
I need a new pair of shoes anyway. Before I could protest, Amy was dragging me out the door and down the stairs. As we stepped outside, the warm summer breeze felt strange against my made-up face. We walked down the street, Amy chatting animatedly about her latest fashion obsessions and school gossip. At the mall, I felt eyes on me everywhere we went. Amy didn't seem to notice or care, and her confidence was infectious. She pulled me into store after store, picking out outfits and accessories for me to try on. In the fitting room, as I looked at myself in a variety of dresses and skirts, I started to feel a strange sense of acceptance. Maybe it was the way Amy looked at me, or the way the sales associates treated us like any other pair of friends. For the first time, I began to see, Michelle, as more than just a punishment. We ended our day at the ice cream parlor, sitting at a small table with our cones. Amy leaned back in her chair, a satisfied smile on her face. Today was fun, Michelle. I think I really like having you as my best girlfriend. I smiled, feeling a warmth in my chest that had nothing to do with the summer heat. Thanks, Amy. I think I like it too. As we walked home, hand in hand, I realized that this experience had changed me in ways I hadn't expected. I wasn't just Bill anymore. In a strange, unexpected way, I had become Michelle. And for the first time, I was okay with that.